Hello AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here. We're going to talk about our first video from Unit 5, Topic 5.1. It's all about something called the Mean Value Theorem, but I'm going to introduce a slightly altered version of that particular theorem called Rolle's Theorem. We're going to start with a little activity here, the opening stages of the notes. So let's take a look here at this particular graph where you have a couple of steps here. I want you to place two points anywhere on this coordinate plane below. The only stipulation is that they have to have the same y values initially. So they have to have different x's, but the same y. And before you connect those two points, I want you to make sure that whatever you do to draw your curve from one point to the next, you have to draw something that's continuous and you must draw something that's differentiable. And I'll help you out with that differentiable. Avoid sharp turns. I want you to pause the video so that you can think about this a little bit. Draw in that sketch, and then let's talk about what you may have drawn. All right, hopefully you have a sketch here. Let's take a look. I know that you might have various things that you have on paper, so I'm going to kind of outline some of the more popular ones. Now one thing that you can't avoid is that you must have the two points situated so that they have the same y. I don't really care what the x values are. Now as you join those two points, several things may have happened. Maybe you drew something like this. Well that's fine because I will go ahead and I will guarantee whatever you drew I bet that there is at least one point on your function where you can draw a horizontal tangent line. Am I right? It turns out that my particular picture here has two such places where you can draw a horizontal tangent line. Well, let's think about what some of your other pictures were. And if we were together at school face to face, we could certainly throw some of these up on the projector. But maybe some students elect for something not so involved, maybe something like that. But again, you would have a point where there's a horizontal tangent line. Maybe, maybe some of you went crazy, right? Sometimes people like to really have fun with this. Well, there's a lot of places where you would have a horizontal tangent line, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's the people that kind of live their lives just a little bit chill. They, 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 they aren't really big risk takers, and maybe you did that. And that is perfectly acceptable. That is a continuous function. It is differentiable. And you'll notice that everywhere on this graph, there is a horizontal tangent line because the slope of a tangent line to a line is the line itself. And this line has a slope of 0. So there's a lot of different possibilities. Now, one of the things that you could not do is you could not draw something rigid like this because at this particular place, the derivative is not 0. It's undefined. That's going to make this function not differentiable. So. There's your first activity to kind of enter this idea of the mean value theorem. This is a, a, a problem that was posed by a, a French mathematician named Michel Rolle. You can read his biography there. One of the things that I think is interesting about him is that he uh, originally was a very vocal critic of calculus, said that it did not give sound results. But later he came to see the usefulness of calculus. Hmm, does that sound like anybody that we might know out there? All right, let's take a look at the formal theorem. It basically says if you've got a function f that's continuous on a closed interval a to b and differentiable on an open interval a, b, we'll talk more about that as our time goes on throughout this video series. If f of a is equal to f of b, then there has to be a number c in the open interval such that the derivative is equal to 0. That's basically it. So why don't we take a look at our first full example that illustrates Rolle's theorem here. We're asked to determine if Rolle's theorem applies to this function f of x equal x to the fourth minus 2x squared on the interval negative 2 to 2. Now we have to state thoroughly the reasons why or why not the theorem applies. And if the theorem does apply, we have to go and find that value of c that's guaranteed by the theorem. We'll confirm our results by graphing with the graphing calculator after the fact. So the very first thing that you need to do is to make sure that you write down the conditions, the conditions for which Rolle's theorem applies. And we know that there are three conditions. You don't have to 
number them, but it can be helpful to keep track if you've got all three of them. And the first condition is your function f of x, and if you want to name the function by its exact equation, you can. And you have to state whether or not that function is continuous. Well, it doesn't require a whole lot of effort to do that. You just simply have to write it, and you can abbreviate the word continuous. We know that this function's continuous because it's a polynomial function. That's not a problem. We have to put that information on paper because we have to connect it to L'Hopital's rule. So you don't have to prove why the function's continuous, you just have to state that it is. And our continuity is always defined on the closed interval. Think k continuity begins with a C, closed interval begins with a C. Your next condition here, which I'll write in green, has to state whether or not this function is differentiable on the open interval. And that's just another thing that you can write. You don't have to prove that this is differentiable on the open interval. And the reason is because this is a polynomial function. And we know that polynomial functions don't have sharp turns. They don't have breaks, holes, or asymptotes. And so we can say that it's differentiable. Now, if you're wondering, why do we say differentiable on the open? Well, the reason is because we're only living on an interval for this problem. We don't know what happens beyond negative 2 and 2. And because derivatives, by their nature, are defined as limits, and limits have to approach from both sides, we really don't know what's to the left of negative 2, and we don't know what's to the right of negative 2. So that way, we kind of take it a little bit more conservatively and say, oh, well, our differentiability is only going to be on the open interval. In other words, we don't care about what's happening at the endpoints as far as whether there's a derivative. And then our third criteria for Rolle's theorem <clears throat> states, and if you think back to the theorem, I can scroll back here, it's this idea that f of a has to equal f of b. So you have to physically show what is negative 2 and does it equal f of positive 2. And so if we plug those in, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see that you get negative 2, let's make that to the fourth a little bit better, minus 2 times negative 2 squared, and is that indeed equal to 2 to the fourth minus 2 times 2 squared? And after you just do a little bit of mathematics here, you should come to the realization that this is indeed going to be 16 minus 8 on both sides. And as soon as you have shown numerically beyond a reasonable doubt that those are equal, you're all good to go. And so now what we can do is apply the theorem. And the theorem just simply says that you take the derivative of your function, which is 4x cubed minus 4x in this particular case, and we set that equal to 0, and we solve this equation. A little bit of algebra popping in here now when I factor out the 4x, and then I see that I can get x is equal to 0, and then without factoring this, hopefully you all see that plus and minus 1 are also going to be solutions. The last thing that you want to do is double check, make sure that all of those answers fall between those two ordered pairs on an open interval, because that is the conclusion of the Rolle's theorem once again show that there's at least a number c on that open interval such that the derivative is equal to zero. We have done that. All three of our numbers are between negative 2 and 2, and so this would be the answer to our Rolle's theorem. We don't have to call these c, but we can if we wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the graphing calculator, and let's take a look at the findings that it shows us. Well, here we are with our graphing calculator, and I've gone ahead and sketched this function for you already, and you'll notice that I've altered the window size just ever so slightly. And I wanted to do that to really show and illustrate these places where the derivative is equal to zero. And lo and behold, we see that that is happening here when x is negative 1, again when x is positive, or positive 0, when x is 0, and then lastly when down here we have x equaling positive 1. Now I would like you to finish your notes and 
replicate this graph on your notes page there using the scale of that particular coordinate plane that was provided and kind of highlight these three points as best you can so that you know those are the places where Rolle's theorem applies. Hopefully this helps out a little bit. We're going to move into some other videos here that deal with the mean value theorem next.